Hello, my name is Bill Claypool with Church of God Amalgamations Affiliations. Sitting in my office today is Dr. Michael Knight from Covenant Community Church in Madisonville, Kentucky. And uh, Dr. Knight is a wonderful friend of ours. And about 10 years ago, God Kingdom connected us uh, together in a church plant that evolved out of a passion of his heart. At that time, he was a successful youth pastor, a denominal leader in another Pentecostal group, and a renowned speaker in regard to youth ministry. But the Lord began to deal with him about the value of planting a contemporary church with a Pentecostal message to reach this culture. And uh, we began to get connected in so many wonderful ways through fellowship and uh, friendship and uh, our common denominator of being from Kentucky. And I'm just excited to have him here today. And I want, to, uh, Michael, if you don't care, just to share the joys of the journey, the pace of the journey, because you had a quick favor that came on you from some 40 people in the first meeting and now over 1,300 members or adherents in 12 years. You know that God has favored you in that area. and We're so elated to have him a part of our covering and he has been such a wonderful asset not only to our church there in that community but to the body of Christ at large and most of all uh, he has spoken into thousands of church planters in the Church of God and transdenominational. So I'm excited to have him. I want to get out of the way because you need to hear what this man of God has to say in regard to the value of being kingdom connected and covering and two is better than one and a threefold cord cannot be broken, Solomon says. Michael, just share from your heart what the Lord's saying to you about what we're talking about. You know, uh, about 10 years ago, the Lord began to deal with me about um, a covering and about going home. Originally, all, all of my early education was in the Church of God. My family converted uh, not to, to Christianity, but started attending church and became Christians back when I was a freshman in high school. And my first introduction to the charismatic movement was really the Church of God. So I had a lot of roots there already, and uh, it was home. And um, I went out and obeyed God and worked with the Assemblies of God and many other great organizations like the IPHC. But... I came to a point in my life where the Lord just simply spoke to me and he said, I want you to come home. And um, it wasn't an easy journey and it's not going to be easy for you, but it's probably um, without a doubt one of the best decisions I've ever made. You know, Billy, I get asked a lot by very blunt people, why would you want to bring 1,300 people and $5 million in property into a church of God? Well, that's easy. I'm not building a church for my own heritage. Right. And I really, early on in the church planning process, struggled with these ideas that whatever I'm doing now is going to affect the future because so many churches that are older are in trouble because of systems and polities that someone created a long time ago. So I'm very careful administratively as I create policies. And even in the early days of covenant when we, we were um, uh, exploding, um, to make sure I don't adopt policies uh, that would hinder my predecessor because I've always thought about the church planning process in the terms of succession, which is a business term, but it really needs to become a, a um, church term. Right. Because uh, it's certainly rooted and grounded in the New Testament of the Apostle Paul. But anyway, I, uh, I, I just really had that thought that uh, whatever I'm about to do for God and whatever He would give me favor to do, I need to think long term. And I thought maybe I'm a catalytic church planner. Uh, I didn't plan on staying there forever and um, I uh, didn't know what would happen you know um, but I thought if anything does happen I want something large enough to mother this blood sweat and tear work that I was doing. I wanted something to, to, to um, guard five million dollars worth of property so that no one man or woman would ever own it which right. is a problem billy in our city and uh, great people in that city but there's been a major problem there mm -hmm. where people have given millions of dollars that eventually ended up in the hands of men and women once again and the men and the women who were the majority who paid for these buildings and these properties are left with nothing right so i wanted to honor the giving of the people of covenant i wanted to protect them with a centralized government that was strong enough to come in if there was a problem you know there's an old mindset that denominations are controlling that's i found in my experience nothing could be further from the truth that's just not true but it certainly has not been true for me they've been very helpful they've been like fathers to me uh it's been good to come home and um 
They've been real, true, loyal friends, and it's one of the best ex choices I've ever made with my life. I think one of the things in the early days is Michael and I, uh, we talked about being a part of something that outlive us, and I Absolutely. hear that. Uh, standing, why reinvent the wheel when you can stand on somebody else's shoulders? Mm -hmm. And in this process, we've cried together, we've wept together, we've seen successes, and out of that, there have been other kingdom connections that have opened up a segue to young men and women that that you had mentored that needed a uh, uh, a structure mm -hmm. where they could be sent into and released uh, into the kingdom of God uh, for great work, and so we've seen that. No, well, Billy, you know that's so true, and it even goes kind of farther are deeper than that because we're living in a generation of post-modernity where you cannot even go to the local prison if you don't have an accredited license from a large organization right. because so many people try to get licensed from a Christian bookstore and go see their family members. So it's we're in a day where that kind of large covering is important. Now is there problems there and do we need to continue to reinvent structures and sure. systems and polities for post-modernity? Yes. Do we struggle with being organic and institutional? Yes, that's, right. a, that's a normal process of any movement. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm not building a church in Madisonville uh, for myself. Right. At the end of the day, when I leave that place, I want it to stay stable, and I want something to be a mother of it strong enough to make sure that happens. Right. In summation, uh, Michael, uh, as I said, you know our relationships were forged at Lee University, and God put us together when I was a state youth director in Oklahoma and we got reconnected and I was finishing a master's degree there and we would have never thought in our wildest dreams that uh, God had this uh, prophetic platform for us. But uh, you may be out there listening today and you have a church and you're a pastor and you feel like you're by yourself. I just want you to know that we stand ready and available. Uh, not to come in as an encroachment or incarcerate or to stalemate vision, but we're excited about partnering with Pentecostal charismatic contemporary leaders that have a vision and a call. And you may need someone to come beside you, uh, as the scripture tells us, in a covering mode or security mode. Solomon said there is safety in the multitude of counselors, people who have wisdom. We have a lot of instructors, but not very many fathers. And so you see this relationship today has, has been developed over the last several years and it's been nurtured and, and it's been cared for. And out of that, it's a positive experience and encounter. So I celebrate that today. We don't have time to talk about it, but I can tell you about many success stories, the conversions that have happened at this church, young men and women that are at Lee University today. Uh, they're already involved in church plants and other parts of the Church of God. And so it's about a network, a network of believers. And the beautiful thing about this, he hit on it. We are connected, but yet we're interdependent. So we're here to serve you and uh, connect you and to bless you. And Michael, I just want to say thank you. And I've enjoyed our time together today. And in a closing moment, would you just reach out to a pastor or to a local church, our parachurch organization that uh, may be considering this today. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I'll be praying for you because God's got to lead you in this decision. It's first and foremost, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual. There's a God that has a divine will for your life, and I know you know that, and I'm preaching to the choir. But also I want you to think in terms of a platform and to realize that one can send a thousand, a flight two can send mm -hmm. 10,000. And while Covenant Community Church has over $5 million in property and, and um, 77,000 square feet and 33 employees and 1,300 people call it home, we can never reach 176 countries in one day. But because I take our, our, a, a tithe, which I'm going to do as an independent pastor or as a pastor, and I, com I combine that money with 7,000 American churches and 20, 30, 40,000 churches worldwide. And we send $32 million to world missions. And we've sent hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars to church plants in this country over the last six, seven years. And I just found out that uh, I may not need a place to go uh, to buy Sunday school literature, but I need a family. And I want you to think about that and then think about how a movement or a protective 
organization where there's a father and there's an organic relationship can really build a platform for what God has spoke to you in your life to say to the body of Christ because um, it, your gifts and callings will make a way for you. Thank you, Michael, and uh, our information will be available for you. And I, again, let me reiterate, I'm available to talk to you. And as he said, this has been a process. It was a two-year process before we ever organized the church. So we're about people, and people count. And relationship is the byproduct of fruit. And we thank God for all that he's done for you and what he's going to continue to do for you in the church of God and the kingdom of God at large. God bless you.